Hi everybody! So this video is your step-by-step -step tutorial for your um, assignment 3 for module 3. We're in week 4. So the goal of this project is to understand layers, um, use a brush tool, use a crop tool, and use the rotate tool. Um, I chose Pablo Picasso's painting Guernica not because Pablo Picasso is my favorite artist, but because it has a lot of detail um, that you can zoom in and capture different moments and crop to um, different parts of the image to make sort of your own, almost like a little collaboration with Picasso himself. Imagine you're a time traveler and Photoshop is your time machine. So first we're going to download the image. And we'll drag it to our desktop and I'll put it in my Art32 folder, just like we did for last week. Um, and I guess before we crop the image to focus on a specific subject area, we're going to open this in Photoshop. There it is. And then we'll crop. So I'll find the crop tool over here on the sidebar. Um, you became familiar with the layout of Photoshop um, while you were going through the content pages in this module. So just a refresher that these are the tools on this side. Um, and then the windows over here, you can arrange um, as you see fit. So if there are too many up here, you don't need some of these. Um, then you can click out of them by clicking on this little, is that four, three, four lines, um, and close that. Close, close, until you need those things. Um, but really what we need is our color, our swatches, and our layers for this. So I'm gonna close out paths too. If I decided, um, oh, I needed that, back actually. I can go back up to window and I can put paths back, but we don't need paths. Most importantly, layers. Um, so first we're going to use the crop tool. So we'll find that over here. And if I click and hold I'm on a trackpad. If I click and hold down and then I can release um, the crop tool, the shortcut for the crop tool is a C, C on your keyboard. So once you start to get in the flow, um, you might find the shortcuts really helpful. I love them. I basically only use shortcuts for um, most of the tools. So I'll escape out of that. And now that I have my crop tool, I'm going to click and drag. And now it grays out everything that's not in my square. Um, you can do a rectangle, you can do a square, you can do a tall one, a long one. Um, that's up to you. So zero in on a place that you find most interesting in the painting. I'm going to crop right here. And once I'm happy with that, I can press enter or return. And I can zoom in. So here's my zoom tool. And then option to zoom out. I can also press on a Mac command plus and command minus to zoom in and out. And now that we've cropped that, I'm going to go up to file, save as. entitle this in my art32 folder, my name underscore cropped. Okay, next I'm going to rotate the image, image, image rotation, and 90 degrees clockwise. And then I'm going to save that as well. Save as, remember if I save, just save, um, it will save over my previous file. We'll save over Kelly O'Leary cropped, but we want to save this as a duplicate file um, 
Kelly O'Leary rotated and save that. Okay, now for the fun part. Um, now we're going to add a layer and we're going to add a layer and add color on onto that layer. So to find the layers, we're in our layer tab, go all the way down here and see all of these icons. This is your layer, add layer icon. So it had, it's a square with a plus sign. You're also welcome to watch these little quick videos um, that they have when you hover over any of these icons to learn more about the tools. So when I click add, I see layer one. And I want to make sure that that is selected. If I select this, then any changes or any marks that I make are going to be made on whatever layer is highlighted. So that will be on the background. The background is locked. So if I press my V, my uh, move tool V, it's not going to let me actually move anything on there. It's locked. When I go up to layer, um, layer one, I want to add color. So I'll go over here to my side panel with my tools and I'm going to click on this pencil tool. That is my brush. If I hold down, I'll see there's a paintbrush tool as well. The difference between the paintbrush tool and the brush tool, the pencil tool, or the brush tool and the pencil tool, the brush tool is more like a paintbrush. It has soft edges. The pencil tool is more like a pencil because it has harder edges. I'm going to go with my pencil tool and I can also change the size up here. So now that's bigger. The hardness is going to be the the um, softness of or the hardness of the line around the, the edges of your brush. I'm going to go hard so I get really tight um, edges and I'm going to play around with this a bit. And so now I'm on my layer one. I've got a color. I can change the color by going down here and clicking on this little color icon and I can choose from any of these colors. I can also go to my swatches and choose any of these colors that have already been kind of mixed for us. These are sort of prefabbed um, palettes. I'm going to keep with this kind of purpley periwinkle color and ensuring that I'm on layer one, I'm going to add onto this. Guernica painting some color and I can zoom in and when it gets kind of tight around different objects that I might want to go around I can make my brush smaller. Now this is your creative call. You get to decide what color, you get to decide what shapes, um, how you color in this image. I'd like you to choose at least two colors and do at least two layers. So I'm going to do one layer for you now. And I'm on my laptop. So what I'm doing with my finger is my pointer finger is pressing down on the trackpad clicking and my middle finger is the one um, kind of painting this. I would suggest using a mouse if you're going to be doing a lot of kind of freeform coloring like this um, because it's after a while it's not going to be too comfortable on your hands. If you do a lot of freeform painting in Photoshop, you might consider getting a Wacom tablet and having a stylus pen. But for now, a mouse should work, and you can get my mice pretty 
affordably. Doesn't have to be perfect. I'm kind of going quickly. You can take your time with this. Okay, layer one. And what I'd like you to also do is play with the opacity of this layer. So if you go up here, you'll see opacity. It's on 100%. That means you cannot see through this color to whatever is behind it. When I mess with that, I can see through and I'll still maintain that color. And we have a really beautiful little addition to our painting now. So I'm going to name this purple, even though it's sort of between blue and purple. And I'll add another layer. Let's choose another color. I'm thinking maybe a yellowy green. And making sure that I'm on that layer. Actually gonna go over this face. I want to show you what it looks like when we go over this too. And we can see through to the other layers through colors. It's kind of fun. Mm -hmm make my brush a little bit smaller so I can get in those detail areas not being precious right now for the sake of the tutorial and then when I feel done or before I'm going to go up to opacity and play around with that I'm going to take my eraser tool and clean this up a bit the eraser tool is right here, and the shortcut is E on your keyboard. I'm actually going to take this part out because I don't. Love how that green is coming out of his mouth. <laughs> okay. So I hope you get the idea there. Um, so at least two layers and at least two colors. I'm going to rename this layer green. How to turn this in. File, save as, and save this as a TIFF. First I'm going to change this to Guernica and save it as a TIFF. That's going to keep all of my layers. Save. It will increase the file size to keep layers in your file, and that's OK, at least for this purpose. And then last thing I'd like you to turn in, take a screenshot of your window so I can see your layers panel and your setup. And that's it. I'm looking forward to seeing what you create. Thanks.